As a young boy, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was always fascinated with nature, particularly birds. When he became involved in politics, that love of birds translated into his desire to protect birds on a national scale. During his administration, FDR created areas of protection that were passed through legislation for bird refuges and sanctuaries. His desire to get these protections passed started as a young senator in New York State through his time as governor and eventually the president of the United States. Franklin Roosevelt, as a young boy, loved to collect birds' nests and eggs. At the age of 10, Franklin began asking his parents for a shotgun. His mother, Sarah Delano Roosevelt, thought this was a dreadful idea. He was too young for a gun. Fortunately for Franklin, his father did not agree with Sarah and presented Franklin with a gun for his 11th birthday. With that gift came a set of rules. There was to be no shooting during mating season. Nesting birds were off limit. Only one member of each species was to be collected. At the age of 11, Franklin started a bird diary that ended up being 79 pages long. In his diary, FDR precisely chronicled every bird that he sighted, killed, and stuffed. Sarah wrote in her diary her concern. The shiny new gun meant many things to Franklin. It helped him create a collection of stuffed birds, first of all, but ornithology in turn licensed him to kill, to affect things on his own, and out from under my anxious love. Sarah, in her journal, documented many of her son's experiences with birds. On July 24, 1893, she writes, Franklin went out at 7.45 with his gun and shot his first crow. Later, January 20, 1894, she says, I went out twice with Franklin with his gun. On March 9, 1894, Sarah writes, Franklin went out before breakfast and shot two bluebirds. And lastly, she notes, on April 15, 1901, F. gave a bird talk to Francis Pell's Hartley Houseboys. Sarah was always proud of her son. FDR would keep a day-to-day -day tally of his kills. Franklin skinned his own birds and did his best to mount the first few. Though his mother said the efforts made him turn quite green. The rest would be stuffed professionally. Sarah had a large case in the central hallway of the home filled with all the birds FDR killed. They greeted guests right through his presidential years with the labels beneath their claws written out in FDR's boyish hand. That case with his birds are still in the central hallway today. By the time FDR became New York State Senator, his interest in birds turned toward more about protecting them instead of shooting them. In 1910, he would be appointed chairman of the Forest, Fish, and Game Committee. He would deal with routine matters, but he also took up key issues involving conservation and preservation. As chair of the Forest, Fish, and Game Committee, Senator Roosevelt treaded carefully when choosing sides on controversial issues. He did heartily defend the Shea White Plumage Act. The bill, passed the year before he took office, was an extension of the Audubon plumage laws that outlawed the sale of feathers from many bird species. Shea White further prohibited the importation of feathers, skins, or carcasses of protected bird species. And when a consortium of New York City grocers eager to secure reliable sources of duck, lobbied mightily for a longer hunting season, Senator Roosevelt countered by sponsoring a bill aimed at reducing bag limits to reverse the diminishment of waterfowl. Backed by the New York Zoological Society and the Audubon Society, 
Roosevelt argued forcefully that struggling waterfowl populations need increased protection, not a longer open season. Though his efforts in pushing the bill were unsuccessful, it failed in the New York Assembly. He continued his commitment of bird protections in New York State right through his four years as governor of New York State to 1928 and 1932. When Franklin Roosevelt became the 32nd President of the United States in 1933, conservation and preservation was at the forefront of the many items on his agenda, as the country would be in the grips of the Great Depression. On March 16, 1934, the Roosevelt administration provided a major stimulus for the refuge system, with the passage of the Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp Act also known as the Duck Stamp Act. It provided needed funding for the ever-expanding refuge system. Eventually, this act provided funding of over $1 billion to the refuge system and required all waterfowl hunters 16 years of age or older to buy a stamp annually. Of equal importance in 1934 was the appointment of President Roosevelt of a special Blue Ribbon Committee, consisting of J. Norwood Ding Darling and Thomas Beck and Aldo Leopold to study and advise the Roosevelt administration on waterfowl needs. This trio alerted FDR and the nation to the growing crisis that was facing the waterfowl resource as a result of drought, overharvesting, and habitat destruction. The trio campaigned the Roosevelt administration successfully to combat the problems facing many waterfowl and bird species at the time. A few days after the Stamp Act was passed, FDR signed the Fish and Wildlife Coordination Act. This legislation required all federal agencies that were working on water resource development, particularly the Bureau of Reclamation and the Army Corps of Engineers, to mitigate the adverse impacts of their projects in consultations with federal fish and wildlife agencies. It further enabled the formation of new wildlife refuges on lands held by other federal agencies. In 1937, the Pittman-Robertson Act allowed the federal government in a joint venture to lend support to the states. This act, which levied an excise tax on firearms provided the states with a desperate needed funding for further protection of wildlife and birds. As you look back at FDR's legacy of preservation and conservation, we as Americans have been able to enjoy the fruits of his work. The Civilian Conservation Corps did their part in creating 36 national wildlife and bird sanctuaries between 1933 in 1943. The Duck Stamp Act by 1935 purchased 1.5 million acres of land for preservation and later another 3 million acres were purchased and nearly 100 wildlife and bird refuges were created under the act by 1940. Another 50 would be added by the time FDR died in 1945. Franklin Roosevelt established Bolden Migratory Waterfowl Refuge in 1936 and the Farmington Bay Wildlife Management Area in Utah in 1935, which was completed in 1940, just to name a few of his accomplishments. Franklin Roosevelt once addressed Congress on January 24, 1935, quote, We must rather start to shape our lives in a more harmonious relationship with nature, This is a milestone in our progress toward that end. The future of every American family everywhere will be affected by the action we take now. In the end, Franklin Roosevelt's interest in hunting birds and learning all he could about every species as a child turned to a lifelong obsession to preserve and conserve the waterfowl and migratory bird populations in the United States. After I would say many times, quote, I would go anywhere to see birds, unquote. Today, 
because of Franklin Roosevelt's vision, there are over 568 wildlife refuge and bird sanctuaries to visit today.